All right, everyone, the bridge for math coming at you, Dr. B. Hope everyone's doing well. Today, we got a video tutorial on how to solve a rational inequality. So let me talk to you about the word rational first. Rational literally means in math, a fraction. And yeah, I know there's nothing rational about a fraction. There's maybe your memory trick. So rational means fraction. Fraction. Now, inequality means not equal. Simple as that. Inequality, there's inequality, it's not equal quality. Not equal. So there's some steps that I want you to basically write down in your notes as you're taking this through on how to solve a rational inequality. I will say them right now. They probably won't make any sense to you until we do the example. So hang tight, hang tough. So to solve a rational inequality, follow the method of a cookbook here. You have to find these things called critical values. Why? They're critical. They will help you solve it. Some books and other things will say boundary values, so also known as aka boundary values. So if you looked up critical value method in your textbook or online or boundary value method, these are the methods that you could use to solve a rational inequality. They basically are the same thing with different names. So the first thing we do is we're going to set the numerator of the fraction equal to zero and solve for x. Then we're going to set the denominator equal to 0, solve for x. These will be the critical values. Don't try to ask why or understand why they're the critical values. That's just the definition. Those are the critical values. Create intervals on a number line from these critical values. So once you identify the critical values, you get a number line, chop it at those points. And then choose test values from each interval. These test values are like co-pilots, test pilots. You put them into the actual inequality they give you, test it out to see if it works and makes it true. So those are the three steps. Once I show you an example, you go, hey, that's doable. Okay, pitfalls to watch out for. Notice Dr. B's serious Picasso art. Ah! These things in the water are sharks. You don't want to fall into the pitfall. So what kind of things could evil professors, no math professor's evil, what could they do to get you in trouble? Make sure the inequality is set greater than zero or less than zero. There's got to be a zero on one side. Um, even on the quiz I'm giving to my students this semester, <laughs> there's not a zero on the side, and they're going to have to adjust to it. So make sure the zero is on one side. And then, when you choose your test value, don't choose a critical value or boundary value. What's another thing I can remind you of? When you look at a number line, what's your instinct when you touch the number line? Yes, you try to draw a zero to split the number line into two pieces, positive and negative. Do not put zero on the number line unless it actually becomes a critical value. So let's get busy and check this out. Here's a diabolically evil rational equality question. Not too mean, but there is a zero. Did you notice there's a zero on one side? So you don't have to do anything with it. You can go right to the steps. But what if that were a one or a two or some number? Or what if there was some other number over here and it wasn't one fraction by itself? Well, you have to make sure you do the algebra to make it one fraction and a zero, okay? If you had a number over here, you'd be getting a common denominator. If you had a number over here, you'd subtract it over here and make a common denominator. So just be aware of that. One fraction with a zero. So let's get some critical values. First, Set the numerator equal to 0, solve for x. Well, what's the numerator? 3x plus 3, the thing on top. What x value makes that go to 0? Sure, negative 1. Good job. Let's go to the denominator. 6 minus 2x, what makes that 0? x equals 3. That's a critical value. Now, some of you are going, oh, making connections to the past? Well done. We know we never want a 0 on the bottom of a fraction because you can't divide by 0. That's good. Good job on capturing that. However, for the sakes of this critical value method, use it as a critical value. Now, once we have those two values, let's chop an interval or a number line into pieces. So I want you to imagine the number line like a piece of rope and you chop it into two pieces. How many pieces of rope do you have? Three. Well done. Way to be thinking. I like that. So here we go. Negative one was your first critical value. Everything to the left of negative one all the way to negative infinity is interval A. Big piece of rope, right? Now everything between consecutive critical values 
is actually an interval. So from negative 1 to 3 is a second interval called interval B. 3 is your last critical value, so everything from 3 to positive infinity is interval C. So you chop up the number line. Remember, notice I did not chop it with 0 in there, right? Remember that pitfall? Good. Now, once you have these intervals, you choose test values. Don't get freaked. You can choose any value you want, hopefully except not the boundary value, critical value, right? So let's look at interval A. What is anything smaller than negative 1? Yeah, negative 2, negative 3, anything smaller than negative 1 to the left. So for this particular example, Dr. B, the bridge for math shows x equals negative 4. What do you do with that negative 4? Don't be mean. Don't say put it there. No. Plug it into uh, uh, the original question, the inequality. So wherever you see an x, you plug in negative 4. So we plug in negative 4. I put a question mark here to see. We're testing to see if it actually works, to see if it's an x value that makes the inequality true. So 3 times negative 4 plus 3 gives you a negative 9. On the bottom, you end up getting a 14 when you plug in the negative 4. Is negative 9 14 is a negative number greater than or equal to 0? No. So put a big false. Put a false on that interval. And here's the good news. If one value that you choose doesn't work, none of them on that interval work. If it did work, all of them on that interval work. So that's hot. It speeds things up. So let's keep going. We're trying to find x values that actually make that work. So let's go to interval B. What, what is interval B defined by? Notice I have a filled in circle, filled in circle at negative 1. Because negative 1 can actually be a solution. And notice I have an open circle at 3. As you know, 3 would make you divide by 0 and it can't be part of the solution. So can you choose any value between negative 1 and positive 3? I always tell my students, if it's a negative and a positive, choose the easiest number in the world to work with. Zero. So I'm plugging in my test value, let x equal zero. Plug it into the original inequality like we did earlier. Do the math, and you ask yourself, is 3, 6 greater than or equal to zero? Yes, it is. A positive number is bigger than or equal to zero. So we've got a true here. So notice I labeled interval b true. Every value from negative 1 to 3, including negative 1, works. Notice I did not write on the board interval C. Could you handle the heat without me here? You could, because you're getting smart and you're practicing. What would you do? Yeah, choose a value bigger than 3. Oh, you mean like 4, 5, 10? Yeah. Choose any of those values, plug it into the original inequality. You'll find out very quickly you'll get a false. And I want to give you a hint. Typically, the pattern will be false, true, false, or true, false, true. It alternates, usually. So if you have a nice teacher, it will usually alternate. But always check your answers just to make sure you didn't do any math mistake. The question actually asks you to give the answer in interval notation. So I'm going to give you a little quick review again on interval notation. So clearly, the x values that make that inequality true are from negative 1 inclusive to 3. Well, interval notation has a bracket for negative 1 because it actually can equal negative 1. It works. Now, 3 has a parenthesis because it can't equal 3. So a parenthesis means 3 is right where it gets close to, but it doesn't equal 3. So every value from negative 1, including negative 1, all the way up to 3, like 2.99999, will work and make this inequality true. That's how you conquer rational inequalities. Do not let them scare you. Take them on and dominate. This is the bridge for math. Take care. Go get them.